so good. They're, they're so good. Dark Angels? Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Liam. I am one half of DeploymentZone.tv and we've had another teased release from Games Workshop. They are kicking out the content right now and tonight we're going to take a little look at Codex Dark Angels. Before we get to the Dark Angels, just to let you guys know, if you want to support the channel more than just watching this video, you can obviously hit the subscribe button and that supports the channel. Equally, you can head on over to www.deploymentzone.tv um, and that is a, a website owned by myself and Winters from Winters SEO, that famed YouTube channel, and you get weekly content from the both of us. Every Tuesday, he gives you a battle report. Every Friday, I give you even more Talking Heads content than you get here on YouTube. And this is the fourth week in a row. And on Friday, it'll be the fourth DZ Talking Heads content in a row. It's just going to keep going, keep snowballing. Uh, equally, you can head on below and hit up the Element Games link, and then you save that to your webpage, bookmark it, or whatever you want to do with your links, but make sure you use that one every time. It's an affiliate link for both DeploymentZone.tv, Winters SEO, and this channel, and we get a little kickback every time you make a, a purchase through that web store. You want to keep an eye on the Element Games web store, because there's something really exciting coming very soon. Uh, and finally, there's a discount code below for the Beard Struggle, and we're going to be doing a giveaway soon. I've just been given the thing, the thumbs up by the owner to give a little giveaway to people, a little beer struggle giveaway. So you can use that link below as well to support us. Um, and that's that. Otherwise, we're going to go on to Codex Dark Angels because another company that supports the channel is Games Workshop. So I'm expecting to see the Dark Angels supplement come falling on my mat sometime within the following week um, because they released a, a bit of an update today on the community page um, and it talked about some of the new rules and said that it was for pre order this Saturday. So no sooner have the Death Guard codex dropped because you could purchase that as of this Saturday just gone we've got another chaos legion coming out all jokes aside i'm both happy and sad i think about the dark angels releasing the information we know so far um this is day one of their release leaks and they will obviously do five days of release leaks because i'm recording this on monday night and it'll go up on tuesday afternoon as normal 5 30 every tuesday so we don't have a lot of information we only have the first leaks of the dark angels codex However, they have dug straight into the Interromancy discipline for the psychic powers, a couple of stratagems, and showed us some additional stuff, relics, etc., that Dark Angels are going to have access to. They've also shown us a model of Ezekiel. And very disappointingly, it's the old model for Ezekiel. And if there's a range that needs updating, it's definitely the Space Marines. They really need an update. But in seriousness, there are characters in all of the sort of specialized supplements for space marines and i call them specialized because they're not kind of they don't kind of sit within the generic codex i mean a lot of them don't now i guess but they are they are space marine chapters that have very unique feels and styles to their army composition and i'm obviously talking about blood angels space wolves dark angels they've been around forever as various factions they have historically had their own codexes and all kinds and we know they now come under this main umbrella of the space marine chapters but there are characters within those codexes that, that really do need a model update. And there are a number of characters, specifically within the Dark Angels Codex, that need that update. Azrael is one that I can think of. There is an awesome, awesome, awesome conversion on Instagram by a good friend of mine, Martin Waller. Check out Instagram's Martin Waller figure painter. I'll link it below. Um, and he... Uh, he uh, has a, a converted Azrael that has been made. He's basically been primarified and Games Workshop check that out, copy that sculpt. That's all you need to do. It's perfect. That's all you need to do. But then there's other characters like Asmodai and Ezekiel that I was really hoping we'd see a couple of those upgraded, had things like the Mephiston type treatment because Mephiston's a glorious model now and Dante just doesn't quite stand up to him. So that's really disappointing. I was hoping we would see, we're not asking for a, a refresh of a whole range, we're not asking for a whole raft of new models, but it would have been nice to see those characters as newer modern day sculpts for the Dark Angels. Same can be said for the Blood Angels. Like I said, I really wish we'd have seen Dante, Astrath, the Sanguinor. I really wish we'd have seen all of those characters 
bowl cup. And at this point, I don't even care about the law in terms of crossing the Rubicon to primary. I don't. I just want the nice new cool sculpts. I don't like this derpy little Ezekiel or Asmodai or whatever they are next to these. Next to the what's is it Lazarus, the special Dark Angels character? Like he just makes them look like they have never touched a gym. Might as well not even bother turning up to battle. So I really would have liked to see them refreshed. Equally, there's other things that have always ignored me, uh, ignored me, annoyed me in the past about the Dark Angels, specifically Ravenwing. I would have liked the Ravenwing bikers to be more in line with those that we got in Dark Vengeance, but we only had those Monopost 3 in Dark Vengeance. Otherwise, you had to wear that horrible, horrible Ravenwing upgrade kit. I would have liked perhaps to see a nice way that they could Ravenwing the new Outriders that exist in Primaris. That would have been really, really nice. Um, they've painted things like the Blade Guard and the colours of the Deathwing, so clearly Primaris can join the Deathwing and the Raven Wing. Uh, come on, come on, you'd love releasing Space Marines. Do something for Raven Wing bikers and, and do something for these characters. We need more Space Marine characters. All joking aside though, it is interesting to see some of the rules that they have leaked because obviously we've recently seen the Death Guard Codex. And I think the feeling genuinely across the board is that the Death Guard Codex is potentially going to be a bit meta-breaking and it's possibly going to be currently the strongest book available in 9th edition. And there was questions about whether we're going to see a bit of an arms race and whether we're going to see power creep across the codexes. And they've now dropped some rules for the Dark Angels. Again, I apologise, I'm not going to catch Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's rules because this is going out on Tuesday. I'm dedicating a video filming time Monday night every week to go out on Tuesday every week. And I'm going to keep that up for as long as I possibly can. So I'm going to miss those rules, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. And obviously the codex will drop in our laps at some point this week, I have no doubt. And on Tuesday next week, we'll be kicking out a codex review like we did with the recent Death Guard one. Um, and they've dropped some of the rules. And, and codex power creep. When I saw some of these rules that release for the Death Guard, I thought, oh my lord, there's some supremely powerful things that are coming from Death Guard. And personally, I'm not getting the same feeling from the Dark Angels Codex. Now, that's not to say that the rules that I've seen are poor or weak. I'm just not feeling that they're on the same level as of power as the Death Guard book or leaked rules were. Now, obviously, we haven't seen the whole codex just yet, so there's a strong possibility that when you combine all the rules together, maybe they're going to have that level of power. Um, but let's talk about the rules that Games Workshop have showed. So first of all, we are talking about the Interamancy Discipline. This is the first part of the article on the Warhammer community page. Uh, um, Mind Wipe. Mind Wipe is a psychic power that existed before. I don't remember exactly what it did. But in the new version of 40k, in the new Dark Angels Codex, it has an 18-inch range. It's a warp charge value 7 psychic power, so you need 7 or more on your dice roll to get that power or to successfully manifest that power and you select an, 18, an enemy unit with 18 inches and you basically turn off one of their auras now that's a really 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 good power and the article does go on to say that um, auras are things in 40k that basically allow units to perform well above basically their capability so you have a unit that has a power and the second you combine it with auras from captains and lieutenants and stuff like that it, it can perform on another level because of those aura abilities now this power 18 inches enemy unit nope you're not using that reroll aura you're not using that feel no pain aura you're not using any of those auras interestingly a, a point to a thing to point out, because this was pointed out to me on the last video, the Contagion ability for Death Guard isn't actually an aura. I made the fatal mistake of suggesting you could use the full Garrus's Helm to increase that aura by, by 6 inches or 3 inches. You can't, it's not an aura. So you couldn't turn the Contagion ability off, which sucks a little bit. But there are other auras. What's super interesting, Mortarion has an aura with his Warlord trait that, that turns all other auras off. Maybe you could use this to turn that off. And it's interesting how they're now playing with auras instead of just flat everybody gets auras. So I think that's a really good power. I think actually you'll probably see it quite a lot with Dark Angels Librarians because I think it's it's very strong. The second psychic power that they leaked is called Engulfing Fear. It's a warp charge value of 7. This one's got a 24-inch range. This is the second one and only the second one that they leaked. They didn't leak anymore. There's obviously going to be four more more psychic powers in the Interamancy Discipline. And Engulfing Fear is a warp charge value of 7 again. Um, you subtract 1 from the enemy leadership and they can't use their objective secured ability. Not quite turning off an aura, but very similar. That is... That's incredible in 9th edition where the primary objectives and the main way of scoring your points is by jumping on objectives and securing them and you turn that off with this psychic power. Interestingly, if you beat the target's leadership, they also can't perform any actions. So a load of you know that secondary objectives often require you to perform actions, raise banners, um, place teleport homers, etc. This stops that from happening as well. You can't perform an action, you don't get objective secured and you're minus one to your leadership. This is quite a powerful psychic power in 9th edition, 
and I think Mind Wipe is better. Although it's a shorter range, it's more generic in its use because you're turning off auras and you could almost guarantee that everybody's going to be using auras. This one may be a little bit more situational. Having said that, you can almost guarantee that an opposite player is always going to be wanting to capture objectives. So imagine sticking this on a librarian and going, that one unit that's going to hold you those objectives and get you even just your basic five points for holding one objective, I'm actually going to turn off objective secured and you're not going to get that one at all. That's interesting. And when I say turn off objective secured, you're not going to get that one. If they're, if they're the only army or the only unit on that objective, clearly they'll still score it because the objective secured rule doesn't make a difference. But you can have a single Dark Angels unit on that objective that aren't objective secured. They could be outnumbered by an enemy unit that's also objective secured. Um, and I wonder if that... No, that just turns off objective secured, doesn't it? So they're still outnumbered. Hmm, that's interesting. I've just reread it. It does specifically say they can't use any abilities that allow them to control objective, even if they outnumber the enemy which would indicate that if you point at that unit, they just can't hold an objective. That's actually really good. That's better than I thought it was when I first read it. They then talk about two relics. They've got the Mace of Redemption and the Heavenful Blade, both relics that we've heard before, but the rules have changed slightly. The Mace of Redemption is now times two strength. It's minus three AP and two damage, and if you're attacking a Fallen or Heretic Astartes unit and you wound on a four plus, you do two mortal wounds. Wow, that's really good. I, I mean, I say it's really good. It's clearly rubbish against things like Tyranids, but then it's still times two strength, minus three AP and two damage. So it's still a pretty powerful relic if you're not hitting Heretic Astartes. But if you are hitting Heretic Astartes, and let's face it, there's going to be a lot of Death Guard around nowadays. You get two Mortal Wounds for this as well. So that's really, really impressive. And Mortal Wounds, two Mortal Wounds is specifically important against Death Guard because it's not two damage. So Disgustingly Resilient doesn't minus one from two mortal wounds, you just take two mortal wounds. So it's better than the two damage it does anyway. That's actually it's actually quite strong when you think about it that way. Now the Heavenfall Blade places a power sword, it's plus two strength, minus four AP and two damage, which sounds really, really good. You get an additional attack with it as well, so it, I mean, say it sounds really, really good, it doesn't sound incredible. What's important with this is you can give it to a Talon Master, even though it's a vehicle. So those crazy land speeders you get flying around with the dual assault cannons and heavy bolters, they can now take a stupidly powerful minus four AP, two damage power sword, and they get an additional attack for it. What's not to love about a vehicle wielding a power sword? It's cool. That's that's cool. So, yeah, given the he even the Heavenfall Blade, don't take the don't take the um, the Mace of Redemption, especially against the Eternal Slaughter. Don't don't do that. Don't. They've then showcased two new stratagems, and they're interesting stratagems actually. One's called Line Unbreakable, and one's called Intractable or uh, Intractable. It's right there. I keep looking there because it's right there, and I've only read it twice so far. You'd think that'd be enough to remember it, right? It's not. Uh, so Line Unbreakable is quite interesting because you can place this stratagem on a friendly Dark Angels unit. It costs a single command point, and basically only enemies in engagement range of that unit can fight. And you think, well, yeah, of course, it's the fight phase. But only models in engagement range can fight. So if you have a horde of boys or hormigants or gene stealers and you're relying on that being within half an inch of a model within half an inch type rule to get ranks and ranks of gene stealers tearing away at the, the, at the, um, at the Dark Angels, then no, no. for one command point, only the front row can fight. So if you've only got three gene stealers that are within half an inch and the rest aren't within that within that half an inch that you need to be in engagement range, they don't get to fight. That's quite interesting because when you're being swamped on an objective and you're being massively outnumbered by a foe that are trying to basically use a bucket ton of attacks to tear your Terminators apart, this makes your Terminators, who are likely, let's face it, to be three wounds in the new edition, uh, because all Terminators in the new edition are three wounds, so Deathwing Terminators will stand there with their shields and go, nope, not happening. You can't attack if you are not directly in engagement range, significantly reducing the amount of hurt your opponent can put on you in the fight phase. I really quite like it. And when you couple this with another rule that I'm going to talk about in a minute, actually it's stupidly strong. Not so much for Deathwing, but for everything else, this is this could be really powerful. We'll go into that in just a second, and I'll remind you that I, I said about this rule. But then we've got Intractable, and Intractable's two command points. Um, it's quite strong. It essentially allows you to fall out, fall back, and shoot again as normal. Now, as we know, in 9th edition, falling back is a a much harsher punishment than it was in 8th edition because most units in 9th can fall back and do nothing else. You can't shoot, you can't perform psychic powers, you can't charge. So any rule that allows you to fall back and do an action is quite strong anyway. It's just good because it means that you don't lose a phase and often we'll, we will see in 9th edition, I have no doubt, people tying units up knowing that they can't shoot in combat 
but can they? Uh, and then they have to fall back and then they can't do anything else. They can't perform psychic powers, can't perform actions, can't shoot. So to spend, to spend two command points to allow you to fall back and shoot is really, really strong when coupled with the next rule that we're going to talk about in a minute. It makes it even stronger again. And importantly, if you've got the inner circle rule, you don't have to roll 2d6 to check to see if you have to, if you can fall back. So uh, I'd imagine the inner circle rule, I mean, I don't know the current inner circle rule. I know it's supremely powerful, but you can't fall back within a circle rule unless you pass a 2d6 test. So I've just pulled out the trusty Warhammer app because it's so good and it works so well. Just to check the inner circle rule as is. And it sounds a little bit with the strategy like it's probably not going to change too much. So it basically says if you want to select a unit to fall back, you have to roll 2d6. And if you're lower than or equal to your leadership, you can fall back. If you are higher than that, you remain stationary. This is unless you have the chapter master or Ravenwing keywords. And it also says each time attack is made as each time an attack is made against this unit, a one, two, or three always fails, which is why I think everyone lost their money mind about the inner circle rule when it first came out because that is very 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 good it's interesting because inner circle mostly is given to death not death watch or death wing but um yeah it's death wing is mostly inner circle isn't it so that's that's very very good as a rule in general and this now allows you to not have to worry about that leadership check to fall out and then allows you to shoot as normal that's really important and that's really important because another another detachment ability that the Dark Angels now have in this new, um, not index, supplement. And so we move into the final rule that Games Workshop leaked today, Monday the 25th of January. And it's called Fire Discipline. And I will probably look across at my computer screen a couple of times because it's quite a wordy rule. And this is one of those things that chapters are now having in addition to other phases of the Doctrine's ability. Now... Previously, the uh, Dark Angels had an ability that was in the Devastated Doctrine. What that ability was called was the Relentless Hunt, and it basically gave an additional six inches to heavy and rapid fire weapons. I think it also gave an additional three inches to pistols. But that was really good in 8th edition when you could maintain the Devastated Doctrine and not choose to come out of Devastated Doctrine. That was quite impressive. In the newer version of the rules, and this happened actually more towards the end of 8th edition, it wasn't specifically a 9th edition change, you now have to change out of Devastated Doctrine. And this new part, Fire Discipline, happens in Tactical Doctrine. Doctrine. Now it remains to be seen whether they're going to lose Relentless Hunt as a rule. Maybe they will. This does state that this is one part of an additional bonus they get during the doctrines, during specific doctrines. So maybe there's going to be more to this. Maybe they'll be specific to types of units. Because this is specifically for infantry models in your army that don't have the Deathwing keyword. So Deathwing Terminators are out and so are Deathwing Knights. Not that they can shoot anyway. Infantry models with rapid fire and assault weapons that are not blast weapons... With this detachment ability, so it's not command points, not psychic power, this is a detachment ability, they can, whilst a tactical doctrine is active, fight, uh, not fight, sorry, shoot at enemies in engagement range. In combat, they can shoot rapid fire and assault weapons. Um, they do count as ballistic skill 5. That's really strong. And, and if you think about it, that's in, that's mental because you can't tie up hell blasters now, for example, which I would imagine we will see things like weapons of the dark age and stuff again. You can't tie up hell blasters because if you can, if you did that currently in ninth edition, they wouldn't be able to fall back and then shoot at you. Well, they can now with a two command point stratagem, or they can just shoot at you in combat if they want to. They count as skill five. It's not as great, but it doesn't cost you two command points to do it. So. It's significantly harder to stop the Dark Angels or shut their shooting down because infantry models with rapid fire or assault weapons can shoot at you if you're in engagement range in the shooting phase. They can then carry on and fight you in the fight phase. That's, I think that's really good. I quite like that ability. And making it Blizzard Skill 5, I also think, doesn't make it too disgusting either. I think that keeps it relatively balanced and it's a trade off. You can, you can spend two command points and you can fall them out of combat and still shoot at full ballistic skill, that's nice. Don't want to spend the two command points, you can leave them in combat, and you still get to shoot in your shooting phase, and then fight in your fight phase. The downside is, it's ballistic skill 5. It's really nice. And there are all the rules that Games Workshop have released today. Um, they're interesting. There's nothing that I think is supremely broken within those rules. Having said that, I'm not a competitive player. You want to be checking out channels like Vanguard Tactics if you want to learn how supremely competitive players will look at books like this. From a narrative perspective, I quite like the rules on the whole. Um, the Interromancy Discipline is a nice 
different amount of flavour and if not every single codex suddenly gets a psychic power or an ability that shuts Nora down it will still be quite individual to Dark Angels. Having said that, we have already seen in the Death Guard Codex that there are, are abilities that exist within certain things like Warlord traits and stuff that shut auras down, so maybe it's going to become a theme, I don't know. Um, however, I do like Mind Wipe, I think it's called, uh, for, for that specific sort of like rule that's just for the Dark Angels currently, and I quite like the fact that it, it's narrative because it sort of links to the, the words Mind Wipe and you're shutting down what people do. I quite like it. Uh, some of the other abilities I think have very, 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 very strong applications in ninth edition. Being able to shut down objectives, secures, and stopping people from performing actions is, is very good. Being able to fall out and still shoot is very good. Um, stopping ranks and ranks of enemy units fighting you is quite good. Allowing you to shoot when you're in engagement range is very good. So I like that what the rules we're getting. Nothing feels overly powerful and insanely broken. They they feel strong and they feel interesting. What I'm disappointed at so far, and I think this is because I'm looking at Monday-only releases, and I'm hopeful that this isn't a sign of what's happening with the Codex, is there is nothing that I think is particularly fluffy to probably the most famed two parts of the Dark Angels chapter, the Ravenwing and the Deathwing. And what I really would love to see, and I'm hoping what will happen is maybe Tuesday will be Ravenwing and maybe Wednesday will be Deathwing, and we see some really narrative applications to things like stratagems uh, in those days releases for those types of units within that codex did that make sense was that even english did i even did i even speak good england then i'm not sure i spoke good england but you get what i'm saying i'd like to see a day where we have ravenwing and it gives you lots of information on ravenwing and ravenwing abilities and how ravenwing can operate i like the same thing with deathwing what i'm hoping is the two pages three pages of stratagems of death that the uh, dark angels are going to get you don't get three ravenwing stratagems and that's all you get I really miss one of the. I used to play frequently, specifically towards the end of seventh edition. I haven't really in eighth edition. I used to frequently play John from Visicast, um, an old channel now. Uh, he hasn't put any content out at all in ninth edition, and I think he basically stopped early eighth edition. I fell out of love with the hobby. Real shame. Cracking guy, a great player. He played a pure Ravenwing list, which is possible in ninth. But you need, he would need multiple outrider attachments at least to do it. And you're talking about really spanking yourself for command points. I've said this before, I'll say it again. What I would really love to see from some of these codexes and some of these supplements is, is detachment abilities or rules that are written into the codex that allow you to take a narrative list without breaking some of the fundamentals that exist in ninth. So perhaps if your warlord has the Ravenwing keyword and outrider attachment is refunded for CP or something akin to that. That isn't a horrifically broken change because you're probably still going to need more than one outrider attachment to run a full Ravenwing list if you want all the toys, but enough that you're still taking nine CP instead of going down to six by running two outrider attachments. So I think it's a subtle a subtle fix to that. I don't think it's too broken and too powerful. Uh, maybe the same if your Warlord has the Deathwing keyword, then a Vanguard detachment can be refunded for points instead of just a Battalion or a, um, or a Patrol. I'd love to see those kinds of rules for Dark Angels. I'm really hopeful that we could maybe see something similar to that because we've had this in the past with detachments allowing you to run uh, Ravenwing and Deathwing detachments as your core detachments in other versions of the game previously. So Games Workshop are aware that people might want to do this. They're aware it's a narrative choice. I really hope we see this. And again, stratagems to the same ilk. We've seen better stratagems in 8th edition for the Dark Angels and I hope they continue to get better. Ravenwing were almost my favourite. Always my favourite for, for Dark Angels was the Ravenwing. I'd love to see abilities that really power up Black Knights and even your standard Ravenwing bikers and land speeders and all those fast attack choices that Ravenwing have. I don't think, if Inner Circle remains the same, I don't think Deathwing need too much. I don't think they need too much at all. They're already pretty strong. But I loved the whole dual wing feel, Ravenwing racing, Deathwing teleport on. They all know about the fall and the hunt and the third company's back, don't know anything about it. That's the narrative Dark Angels for me. That's what I'd love to see from this codex. Not necessarily people that have to build that, but that if you do decide to go down that route, you're not punished for it. I'm really hopeful, I'm really hopeful, and by the time this video goes live, we've probably had the second preview, and they've probably already proved me wrong. Please don't, please don't, Games Workshop. So that's my thoughts on the rules so far. That's what I'd like to see in the Codex, and I'm sure it will drop on my mat on Wednesday or Thursday, and I'll have the weekend to digest it. And if you want to see a Codex review like the Death Guard one, which will be linked above, and I did it this, I'm gonna put both fingers up, because I can never remember which one it goes on. I think it's this one. Is it this one? I, can't, I don't... I, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the card will be enough for the Death Guard video. Um, if I remember to put it in. 
Uh, and if you want to see a Dark Angels review that's akin to that Codex review, then tune in next Tuesday at 5.30 to YouTube, to this channel, and I'll have a full Codex review for you for Dark Angels. Otherwise, like I said at the start of the video, if you want to continue supporting the channel, you can head on over to www.deploymentzone.tv and subscribe to our website, um, and you get access to our Discord. And if you want to become a patron, you get even more access to more channels on Discord. It's an incredible community. There's loads of content. Like I said, you get a battle report from Winters every single Tuesday. Day. And if you saw his recent battle report called Combat School, episode 2 is on there. And by the time this video goes up, I think episode 3 will be on there. There's loads of series getting released in Deployment Zone. There's episode 2 of Alex's Fireside Chat where he sits down for two hours with, say, hi, Paul. Two hours. They, they can talk. <sighs> Also, other ways of support the channel is you can use the Element Games link below. You can also use code DZTV18 for double crystals. A point to note, you do get double crystals, but we don't get any commission if you don't use the affiliate link. So make sure you use that affiliate link when you're buying all your Death Guard models and then before you buy all your Dark Angels models. Right? Makes sense. Uh, and then finally, don't forget, you can hit up the Beard Struggle if you want a full face of hair that looks as impressive as this. It doesn't just grow itself. Just take care of it. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>